I want to firstly say a huge thank you to everyone so far who has taken part in the storytelling sessions across the Forth Valley and also to the Glasgow Village Storytelling Centre for hosting them on our behalf. I also want to add that I am not one of the storytellers who would normally present this section of our webinars, but unfortunately today they've not been able to make it, so I hope I do this um, presentation justice. They have given me some really detailed feedback about the sessions and about their own reflections. So please bear with me while I try to do my best to share this. The Fourth Valley sessions today have involved those who support people with dementia and unpaid carers and unpaid carers themselves. We have also started our sessions for people with dementia and the priorities we have today reflect their input so far. However, these priorities are still Sorry, however, these sessions are still ongoing and once they are completed, the Fourth Valley priorities will be updated to reflect what people with dementia tell us matters to them. And we will share them again after that has taken place. The storytellers wanted us to say that the stories that were shared with them were laden with love, meaning that these are not just stories, but that we are meeting people at some stage of a volume of moments and experiences that have had a significant impact and continue to do so. There can be resentment, isolation and frustration, but also laughter, sheer joy and relief. The storytellers also reflected that carers are the sheer embodiment of rich, interesting characters who are striving to do their best at all times, but are constantly weighed down by the weight of their responsibilities. It's also important to emphasise the importance of a story, not because the content is powerful in its own right, but that it is providing a platform where stories are heard, listened to and acted upon. It is hoped that the forming of the priorities you are about to hear today demonstrates that there is someone out there trying to listen and indeed speak for those who have shared those stories, as well as provide a platform for their voices to be heard. And so before I go on to present the priorities for Fourth Valley that we have so far, I would just like to share a few thoughts from those people who took part in the sessions in Fourth Valley about what care means to them. Care is true love. It's keeping someone safe and engaging them as much as you can. It's going above and beyond, becoming an advocate and not just responding to people's basic needs. Care is about providing stimulation. It's about pushing to get what you want as well as getting people to ask for help for you. It's about taking advantage of opportunities. It's helping people not to fear losing their independence while supporting people to be independent. It's being looked after. It's about challenging the story. As one participant said, there's no ending to the story with dementia. There's only volumes. Care is individualised and recognises the different things that matter to different people. It's being trusted. It's being respected. It's about changing perceptions. It's about being a spokesperson, breaking barriers, encouraging communities. Again, as one person reflected at their session, who helps? Who looks after them? Who speaks on their behalf? Care means taking a different road. It's taking care of each other, each other's needs. It's putting your life on hold. It's isolating. It's lonely. It's remaining in control of important decisions. It's trying to keep everything as before. It's quite a load. It's learning to look forward, but not too far. Care is at the heart of everything. So some powerful um, language there and some powerful reflections from the sessions, which I'm sure will resonate with many people um, in many different ways based on their own experiences, both personally and professionally. So some final reflections from the storytellers was how committed, confident and incredibly passionate those at the sessions were about their needs and the immense strength and courage that they showed in expressing those needs. 
Words used about the conversations were poignant, overwhelming and reflective and that the ability for some to identify positive outcomes of living with dementia was striking. And so I'm now about to present the priorities for Fourth Valley that we have so far. So, priority one. A diagnosis of dementia too often leads to feelings of isolation and stigma. Communities need to be much more aware and better informed about dementia. It's nothing to be scared of. So just a couple of quotes from the sessions that have helped us to frame this priority. Friends start disappearing. They steer away from you and doors start closing. I have dementia. I want to talk about it openly and help change the culture of silence around this illness. So some really important reflections around stigma and isolation, which were running through a lot of the sessions, particularly those from unpaid carers and people with dementia. Priority two, trying to get support can be totally overwhelming. Navigating the sea of bureaucracy with different agencies and being asked to share a story again and again can be very confusing. There is also no consistency across council areas. So a couple of people said, I'd like a, I, I'd have liked a reply to a phone call or an email. Not having to phone every day for a week or a fortnight to get a response from social work or a district nurse. Not endlessly telling the same story over and over again to different people. We need a one-stop shop where people can get all the info and support they need in one space. How about a community-run information hub? So again, many reflections across all the sessions, and in particular, not just those people living with dementia and unpaid carers, but those professionals and volunteers who gave up their time to be part of sessions too. Those themes were running through all of them. So priority three, talking to other people who are also carers or who live with dementia is crucial. They can advise you who to call for support and help you navigate the maze. You only learn these lessons from talking. I can be the voice, tell them who to call, make the call if they need me to. I have been through it too. Let it out, let us know how you're feeling. And peer support is a really, really big thing. It's a big issue. It's something that's really crucial and has been throughout the pandemic, particularly for people with dementia and unpaid carers, because it's helped them live and survive day to day. And it's helped them have some kind of quality of life through this really difficult time. And peer support is as much important for them as it is for those that are around them that support. So it was really good to see this really key theme coming out and we hope that something can be looked at in terms of solutions moving forward. So on to priority four. Carers can feel undervalued and patronised by services. They need to understand that when carers call, they are often at the end of their tether or in crisis. Carers need a voice and huge support. So a number of quotes and, and reflections in our sessions with unpaid carers, and it was difficult for us to try and um, kind of put some of those quotes together to really reflect because there was so many to choose from. So I hope we've done it justice. You become a non-person when you become a carer. The weight of caring can be overwhelming, especially when you're tired. People with the best intentions tell you to look after yourself, but you have to support people to get them to do that. And as I say, because of the pandemic in many ways, we know that unpaid carers in particular have been significantly impacted and continue to be so. So those sessions with unpaid carers that the storytellers um, supported were very moving, very emotional, 
and very challenging sessions. So I hope this priority and the others really honour the experiences that they shared. Priority five. A diagnosis of dementia does not mean you are totally gone, but you need the right support to stay connected and be able to make meaningful decisions for yourself. More structured person-centred support is needed. And again, we hope that this reflects the conversations that we've had with people with dementia so far and that we will continue to have with the additional sessions that we've organised. So some quotes. If you don't have that support, you feel powerless. If you understand the person, you can understand how to care for them. My doctor knows me, and that counts for a lot. And I think what we had seen in, in the conversations was that, you know, the relationship, the time taken to get to know people was just as crucial as the service or support that was offered. So we hope that truly reflects the conversations that we've had so far with people with dementia. And finally, priority six. There needs to be more emphasis on training and awareness for those who support unpaid carers and people living with dementia. Staff want to do their best and provide the best support for individuals, but they also need to know what other services are out there. And this was quite a, a significant theme that ran through all of the sessions around um, connectivity, around awareness, around partnership, around knowing what's out there to avoid that duplication and learning from each other. There's no joined up thinking. Lots of good things are happening, but we as staff don't always know about them. We are not getting it right for our staff. So it was really interesting, but really poignant to hear reflections from staff and volunteers themselves who said, you know, we want to do our best and we are doing our best, but we need a lot more support to be able to continue. And we would welcome that support in whatever shape or form that it takes. So many thanks to those staff and volunteers who shared their experiences as part of the staff and volunteer session, and also who took responsibility moving forward to be part of the Train for the Trainer workshop in order to look at how their practice might change moving forward and engaging in those conversations with people with dementia and with unpaid carers about solutions. So six priorities, which um, in the session later on will be discussed and debated around solutions and moving forward with um, Kayandi Manji and those on the Q&A panel. And again, many thanks to everybody who's taken part in the storytelling session so far. So far, we really appreciate the honesty um, that sometimes can be difficult, but really make a difference um, to the impact of these sessions and also the impact in terms of moving that story forward and looking at change. And I'll talk a wee bit more about that later on.